Hey everyone, so today's tutorial is about remote controlling your Magic Q running on the Mac and I will show you what you need to do, what settings you need to put in to make sure that it's all connected and it's all working and obviously I will highlight what you need to know in order to make sure everything works fine. So I'm using my MacBook Pro running um, uh, OS Mojave uh, 10.14 and I'm running my iPhone that's running on the latest version of iOS and uh, I have updated uh, remote app. So first of all what you need to know is the MagicQ needs to be out of the demo mode. So in my case as you can see here it says MagicQ PC and there's no demo mode in brackets that means it's out of the demo mode. In my case I'm using um, rack mount dongle to unlock it if you have mini wing uh, pc wing or dual dmx box or the old uh, midi box then you have to use that one to unlock it out so if you're using uh if you don't use any campus hardware or using the simple magic dmx dongles that will not work okay so let's just make it clear so there's not going to be any more questions about it so secondly all you have to do on the mac side is you have to make sure you are connected to your local Wi-Fi. So I have my Wi-Fi network connected and you need to go to also to setup. You go to the network and in IP address, double click on it and you need to make sure you are connected to your Wi-Fi adapter that's running on the local IP address. So in my case it's 192, 168, 0 and 10. In your case it might be something different but you need to make sure you have selected the right adapter because sometimes you may have the Ethernet adapter connected, you have um, uh, multiple wireless networks. Anyway, so you need to make sure you have selected the right one and that's about it on the Mac side. So then We'll go go to the next part of the tutorial and I'll show you what you need to do on your uh, iPhone or iOS device. Right, now I'm on my iPhone and you can see here in the left top corner you have the Wi-Fi sign that means you are connected to the Wi-Fi. You need to make sure you're obviously on the very same network as your uh, MagicQ running on the Mac. And I am. Then I launch my MagicQ remote app. So when I launch it, uh, if you look, if wherever you land, uh, whatever the page you land on, you need to make sure you go to the connection tab and in the connection tab, you're going to see your device. So in my case, it's called Aziz MacBook Pro and this is my IP address of that Mac. So uh, that means it's all actually can see the, the remote app can see my console running on my Mac and now I can go through all that stuff. So if you're using um, uh, MQ50 or MQ70 then you need to use the, the option here which says connect with a QR code that will be generated by a console. Okay so in our case let's go through some of the settings that you uh, we have in the remote app and I hope you will you will like some of them. So if you go to the key uh, as a keypad tab you will be able to see the key the, uh, the the keypad that comes to control the basic stuff with magic Q. so that means what you can do is i will only show obviously my remote app without my app running in the background because i can only record one screen at a time so what i can do here is basically you can type tap in the same things as you would do on the console so if you want to select head number one you'll type one at full and you will set the level 100 at the fiction number one. If you want to for example select group number seven that is the in my magic uh, in my uh, magic Q demo show file uh, or Chauvet demo show file this is my Maverick MK2 spots so I can select the group then I can press for example seven and I press at full and that will set my whole group of Maverick MK2 sevens at full. Again, you can see all familiar uh, buttons here. You have clear, you have record, you have blind, you have through all the numbers here, one through ten, uh, one through uh, zero through nine, you have enter at full and, and so on and so forth. 
So what you can do is you can actually select your stuff here the same way as you would do on a console. For example, if you want to select the group number seven, instead of pressing group seven at full, you can actually do the same as with the shortcut. You can tap seven and you press star star that will select the group seven Maverick MK2 spots and then you can set the intensity level of it. Then let's look at the next window. Uh, you can go to the focus window and in the focus window you basically can use that window to focus your fixtures. So what it means is you can actually go through, you can use the key uh, or keypad uh, section to select the group. Again we can do the same thing, so 7 star star and I can put at full. Now if I go to the focus uh, page, I can actually use this one as the fixture focusing while you are on the stage. So I can actually go here, press the bank of the attributes I want to control, go to the dimmer and I can go through intensity or I can use then buttons like next head. You see it shows you sub uh, selected head 101 at 0 and then you can actually use the intensity control to change it. Then you can go to the next head and using the encoder wheel you can actually go scroll through the functions that you need. Then what you can do as well is you can actually select, uh, for example, you can select pan and tilt and you can use pan or tilt to actually control your pan and tilt values. You can go next head, next head, previous head and you can actually use this to do uh, uh, precise focusing on the stage. Then you can of course use the buttons, buttons like fan, odd even, so if you select all the heads together you can press odd or you can select even, uh, even fixtures, you can locate them and you can use the other stuff. So also when you're using the bank of say pan and tilt you can actually use the touch and that will open the, the like sort of the trackpad where you can actually move your finger around and it will change the values of pan and tilt together. If you are going into the color section, let's say color, you also have a color picker. So you can select the color picker and you can use the color picker using the advanced color picker we now have in the magic queue. So you have CCT, you have CIE and you have HSL color pickers. Okay, so again you can continue using any other buttons, you can change back to the encoder and then in encoders you can change to cyan magenta yellow or red white, uh, uh, red green blue, you can change to the bank of yellow again. So this is the CMY fixture therefore it has got CMY attributes. So you can do all these things as you want, then the other a uh, useful window for you is going to be the position window. So the position window basically allows you to uh, interact with the pan and tilt positions. So you can select your group of fixtures, so a group of heads, so you can click on the, there's only two tabs here, so you see group and the position. So you can select group by selecting, scrolling through, selecting the group, and then for example you can locate it if you want. You can go to the position and choose the palettes that you have created for those uh, for those heads. So you can select and that palette will be applied. You can of course do the manual uh, control using the pan and tilt. So when you're using pan and tilt you will be able to actually control all the pan and tilt values. So let's go here and then you can see here at the bottom the values are changing. You can also switch on the fine mode. So if you go in the fine mode, it will be going into the 16-bit control. So all the changes are going to be going slower than normally are. So uh, because it's so it's going to take 255 clicks within each range. So again, this is the fine mode. Again, if the head has got a pan and tilt channels that support 16-bit. This is when it's going to be useful. So the next window it's going to be execute window. So this is exactly your execute windows that you can control. By default the page of the executes has to be chosen 
once at a time using the connection tab going in the settings and then you have your execute page here where you can type the execute page number why you need this because you may use multiple remote devices that will be controlling separate pages for example you can have one device controlled by um, by uh, by let's say uh, uh, one part of the studio that's controlling uh, one page uh, of the executors that's only working on uh, specific parts of the studio and then the page one for example will be to control the lights across the multiple studios at the same time or it could be a function room where it, it is divided on the multiple rooms so but there is a trick basically if you add in your execute window and execute page up and page down options you can actually scroll through pages so I have page up here and I have page down here so I can now this is my page 2 and I can activate stuff here or I can go back to the page 1 so again this is really useful to do all your controls when you may not have a secondary monitor and you would like to actually have a quick access to your execute window or to some other attributes either from the stage or even next to yourself uh, in again in case you don't have external monitor so another uh, another button that's been extended is uh, the button called window so basically the window button allows you to have access to all the very same windows uh, almost all the very same windows you have in the magic queue so when you click on the windows and you click on the groups it will actually on the magic queue it will open that window so uh, don't forget that you actually when using remote you actually connecting to your console that's not a secondary user that is the very same user so every time you open the window on your on your remote app you will open the very same window on the console unless they are the buttons that we use here like exec position focus or keypad these buttons they are also re related to the, the the very same programmer but if you're an execute window you can actually have an execute window one open on this one and at the same time on the magic U console you may have different windows open so again let's go to the windows so again you can select your heads here you can use the position palette window you can use color palette window you can use beam uh, then you can also open the patch patch window and you can actually bring changes here as well you can actually do even the repatch through this window so you will be able to see some of the stuff but not all windows are gonna be working in the remote app some of them intentionally some of them they are work in progress so like for example uh, this all basic windows will be open will be working the output window is working and it's working the same way as it is on your console you will be able to see all this window you may not have exactly the same colors as on the magic queue because this is the remote app you will be able to see some of the tabs again um, like a plan view or plot view are not currently supported in the remote app therefore you won't be able to see them or grid views you won't be able to see them like oh same things as a vis view like visualize view you won't be able to see that but um most of the windows are working so like intensity window you can actually come here and you can use that programmer and even the setup window so currently only the current open tab of the setup window is supported and then you can also preview what status you're running your show file uh, you're running the monitors etc etc and uh, I would say the other uh, really cool feature that you can use now on your uh, remote app and that's we actually spoke about it before was the fact that you can actually use for example if you in a beam you can ov obviously of course open the the ranges and if you create a palette let's say we have fixtures selected let's say we will uh, open the beam we will put some gobo on it and then we can scroll down we can actually uh, press record we open the window again find the empty slot and we can press for example beam 85 palette and it will create a palette for me which is cool but what you can do as well is while you have a palette selected 
what you can do is you can actually select um, you can actually press that button here which looks like a camera and you can position it and then you can press capture and when you do so the captured uh, picture will be applied onto your palette or in the magic queue you will not see icons at the moment or the pictures on the remote app this is the work in progress but for time being the all the pictures that you will be taking will go straight away into the magic queue the palettes that you have created i mean this f function is going to be extended more but i would say as far as i know we are the first actually uh, software that does that that takes the pictures and the, the lighting software uh, i would say that actually does that and applies to the palettes um, for your convenience so you can actually make a nice position palette for your heads take a snapshot of your stage and that snapshot will be saved onto your palette so you can actually visually see what is stored in that particular palette cool i hope it was useful so if you have any other further questions write down in the uh, in the comment section thank you very much and have a lovely day bye bye